Hey, this is Terry from Oxen Technology. Hey, I want to talk to you today about email account compromise uh, and also another phrase that you've probably heard of in the news, uh, business email compromise. And so interestingly, this distinction was pointed out uh, to me uh, recently that I think is really important to share with you to understand the two very real threats that each of us faces when we're using email. And so business email compromise, just very quickly, is when an attacker is pretending to be you. Email account compromise is when the attacker is you, when they have actually compromised your account and they are really sending emails from your inbox and you may not even know it. So I'm gonna show you some illustrations here on the computer. We're gonna walk through some examples, but I wanna show you uh, hopefully what you already know, but maybe make it a little bit clearer and give you some tips on things to look for that will indicate uh, a business email compromise attack on your email infrastructure. Okay, let's go to the computer. I'll show you here what, talk, what I'm talking about. All right, so we're here on my desktop. I'm here on uh, Microsoft's Bing search engine. And I just searched for uh, images uh, with examples of business email compromise. And I wanna step through and show you and just give some commentary on a few of these and move very quickly. Uh, so some of the characteristics of email compromise, I'm gonna just abbreviate this for the sake of time, BEC attempts. The whole point is to get you to uh, keep moving through that email and take action. So, you know, in this instance here, new vendor payment from uh, William Ingram, CEO of company.com. This email address is what's called the display from address. I can make this say whatever I want it to say. All of that can be manipulated to say whatever I want it to say. So you can't trust that alone, that, that uh, this message is in fact from William, but let's keep going. Alyssa, do you have a moment? I'm tied up in a meeting and there's something I need you to take care of. Make an international wire transfer payment of 86.5 to the attached account. This is a new vendor and payment is due today, right? So the first thing that I want you to see here is this sense of urgency, okay? There's oftentimes I, I'm motivating you. I'm the bad guy. I'm motivating you. Take action right now, right now, or there's going to be you know some consequences or we're going to lose the deal or whatever. There's going to be some adverse effect if you don't act now, Alyssa. And uh, also uh, very common that uh, I'm in a meeting. I can't be reached. So, you know, I'm going to paint the picture if I'm the bad guy that you can't call me to verify this because I'm not available right now. So here's another example of a, an email that's coming from Microsoft. Now, notice the sophistication of this message, right? Action required. Looks very legitimate, very formal. Password confirmation, Office 365 email, April 9th. It's got the logo there. I mean, this, this looks legit, right? If I'm moving through here at uh, warp speed, right? I'm blowing through my emails and I'm not thinking about what's happening. I might take action on this. One-time password review. Hello, please confirm email password to avoid login interruption. Well, I don't want that to happen. Reason, user's email password confirmation without look. Check now. The whole point of this message is to get me to click that blue button. And I can almost guarantee you the next step of what's going to happen here is that it's going to ask me for my email account and my password. And, and of course, we know that that's not legitimate. They're actually going to capture my email address and password, and they're going to use it to obtain illegal access, uh, unauthorized access to my email account. So again, this is one of those, this is a, actually a great example. Uh, and our phishing tests, when we fish our users and we do simulated uh, tests, man, these types of things, People click on these things all the time. It looks very legitimate. Here's another example, uh, Isaac King. Now again, let's just pretend that Isaac King, I know this person, I do business with them all the time. It's very normal and they are at kingplastics.com. That, that's all legit. Hi, Aubrey, I trust you are well. Did you receive the email I sent yesterday? What I probably missed if I'm moving very quickly is the presence of two S's. Now there are some cases, earlier I told you that I can uh, I can make that display from address, right? This Isaac King. I can make this top line here uh, uh, say whatever I want it to say. So there are reasons why attackers will manipulate this, and I'm not going to get into into that in this video. But so this is another thing that would point out some behavior that is indicative that this email is probably not legitimate. So here's a here's another message that is 
uh, payment slip. And so this looks like, a, uh, you know, an invoice, someone is emailing me an invoice and, and we're just going to pretend for a moment that that from address is uh, legitimate, right? There's nothing about it that would, would cause me concern or send up a red flag. But then I get down here to this message attachment. So, you know, the first thing that should jump out at me, is this is a dot zip and people don't normally send me invoices that are compressed. For starters, my invoice hopefully is not that big. Yikes. You know, if I've got to compress an invoice that big, I probably don't want to open it right now. But anyway, all, all kidding aside, you, you know, dot zip, anytime you get something that is compressed, uh, you should be reaching out to somebody to verify the legitimacy of that message. And again, we see the other, uh, well, uh, we see some other characteristics here. Dear sir, mo mo most of times today, we're corresponding with people that we know. Dear sir, you're probably going to greet me by my name. You're not going to you know, you're not going to, you're not going to be impersonal. The, the syntax here, the flow, uh, we don't talk like this. We transfer it electronically to your bank account. You know, it's just a little awkward. The wording kindly confirm the bank details. And you know, we don't talk like that. We don't, we don't use the word kindly very much. It just sounds weird. It's awkward and there's weird, uh, you know, capitalizations. So there's just so many different things here that jump out at me that indicate this message is a little weird. I'm going to reach out. If there's any question in my mind that that this or, or any any thought that this might be legitimate, um, these things should just prompt you to say, "Hey, I'm going to reach out and make sure that uh, this is legitimate." Those are a few things that I think I would look at, and um, just to give you an idea, these, these are things that are, like I said, attempts at business email compromise. And at this point in the game, as long as we haven't clicked on a URL, we haven't uh, you know haven't clicked on uh, an embedded link or we haven't opened up a file attachment, generally we're okay. Now, I don't even want to tell you about some other stuff that I'm learning about uh, opening emails. We're not going to cover that in this video. For now, I just want to get you sensitive to things to look for in email messages that might indicate that uh, people impersonating legitimate people that we do business with, and they're trying to get us to take some kind of urgent action to click on a link or open up a file attachment that's just going to lead uh, to to badness, right? We want to stop that kind of behavior, and we want to get we want to get very sensitive about um, uh, the, the sensitive to the different kinds of warning signs that we've talked about in this video. Okay, so hey, we're going to leave it at that, and I would really invite your comments uh, below. I'm Terry, your shared CIO with Oxen Technology. Thanks.